And as you can imagine, this is affecting a lot of people in a deep way. Meredith Bruckner actually spoke with a man from Metro Detroit who's living in Tel Aviv to learn more about how this is affecting him and so many other people. Yes, I spoke with Hanan Lees, who uh, is someone who I know very well about what it's like um, right now to live in Israel. He shared his experience having to seek shelter with his grandchildren when air raid sirens go off. They come over. When the sirens go on, we go to the secure room. We have to make them feel secure and not afraid. Um, my granddaughter, there's one who is nine. She understands what's going on. There's one that's six. She also understands. They, they talk about it in school. My three-year-old grandson, for him it's a little more difficult, but even the kids understand why we go to a secure room. They understand why we have to stay there and how fast it is to go. we have to go there. And we are the lucky ones. We have a minute and a half from the time a missile is heading towards Tel Aviv uh, before it can reach us uh, to go into a secure room. The people who live in the southern Israel have 15 seconds. So uh, it's hard. It's hard. We've been here before during missile attack from Gaza. So we're not, it's not new for us, but uh, with kids, with little kids, with my grandkids together doing it. This Since the attack began, thousands of rockets have been fired by Hamas from the Gaza Strip into Israeli cities, several making impact, including in Tel Aviv there. And Meredith, uh, we are certainly glad to have you on our team, proud to have you here. But before you worked here, you actually did work in Israel for 11 years. You were a news anchor there. What was it like living in that area, especially during difficult times? Yeah, um, as you can imagine, it's, it's a challenge as a journalist. Um, I think the really unique challenge there is you can't escape the reality. You are going to work to report on it, usually for about 12 hour shifts, maybe more. Um, but then you have to go back home and still be surrounded by this reality. We, we had air raid sirens go off, as Hanan mentioned, when we were in studio. I had to evacuate the studio live on air, as we are now. We had to say, excuse us, viewers, we have to go take shelter in that building. It was a stairwell. Uh, many buildings have designated rooms as bomb shelters, but stairwells are the next best step. Yeah, and you know, we're just watching it play out on TV. It's scary enough there, but just living day-to-day -day life there, what was that like? Daily -day life, um, it's very, very starkly different in times of war than it is um, in just in normal times. I think something I'd like to mention um, is a lot of people in the newsroom today have been asking me about coexistence. Um, coexistence, I think, isn't something that's really shown on the mainstream media. We see a lot of this wartime coverage, but when things are calmer, we don't see that, you know, things are actually tend to be very wonderful in mixed cities where my um, where my channel was in, in Jaffa, right outside, right next to Tel Aviv. It's a mixed um, Arab and Jewish city. Um, so it was it's very, very different than you realize. People do coexist. People have wonderful relationships with people of all different religions and backgrounds. Um, and unfortunately, that isn't portrayed. Yeah, always. that's not always highlighted. Uh, we're hearing the death tolls and the injuries, and there are reports of people missing as well. Have you been able to talk to anyone that you're connected to there, and what are you hearing as far as that's concerned? Um, Israel is, you know, a lot of people say it's about the size of New Jersey. It's a very, very small country, and so, so naturally your degrees of separation are just so much smaller there. Um, so, so, I mean, even in my own personal social media, I'm seeing every other post almost. Um, someone whose friend, whose family member is looking for someone who's missing. Um, it's, it's incredibly hard. Families are going on air, live on air, sharing that they've heard no information about their missing family member. They last you know, had touch with them Saturday morning when the attack began. They're incredibly frustrated with the government, with police, with the army. There's, they know nothing. And, and we know that these people range in age from babies to elderly Holocaust survivors who were kidnapped into Gaza. So um, the missing people situation is, is an especially difficult part of this yeah. situation. Right and now. I know this is deeply personal for you. It takes an incredible amount of strength to share these things. Just know that your CBS Detroit family is praying for your family there, and we're hoping that everything works out for, with all of this. Thank you, Terrence. Yeah.